Spurgeon said, it is not that they resolve to be damned, but they resolve to be saved tomorrow. It is not that they reject Christ forever, but that they reject Christ today. And truly, they might as well reject Him forever as continue perpetually to reject Him today. Tomorrow is the devil's day. Today is God's day. There are souls who have procrastinated towards Christ, and they have procrastinated their very souls into hell. If you are to be saved, you must believe in Christ now, today, while the offer is being presented. Now is the day of salvation. You need it now. God is angry with you now. You are condemned already. Now without God, now without hope, now an alien from the commonwealth of Israel, now dead in trespasses and sins, now in danger of the wrath to come, now therefore you need to be saved. But sir, I do not think such a thing should be done in a hurry. A hurry? What does David say? I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. A hurry? When a man is on the edge of damnation and on the borders of the grave, do not talk of hurry, sir, when it is a case of life and death. Let us fly as swift as a flash of lightning. Spurgeon said, if the gospel command were think and be saved, I would cheerfully allow you a month's thinking. But the command is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and now is the accepted time. Well, says one, I do not feel convinced enough. Dear friend, you do not think that now is the accepted time? Here is a quarrel that you have with God. God says now, you say no. Yes, but I would like to get home and pray. My text does not say it will be the accepted time when you get home and pray. It says now, and as I find you are now in this pew, now is the accepted time. Now you think about that. Delayed obedience is no obedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. We have become way too passive in our preaching of the gospel, way too passive in our witnessing and sharing the gospel with others. Tomorrow is the devil's day, today is God's day. If some of my hearers who listened to me last year and in the years that are past are now now in hell, now where no hope can come, now where no gospel shall be preached, now where they bitterly reject their wasted Sabbath, now where memory holds a dreadful rain, now where their worm dies not and the fire is quenched not. There are souls in hell now because they procrastinated yesterday. This is what true Calvinism communicates. Hey everyone, this is Mark Ryan here with Daryl King for episode 90, is it 93? 93, episode 93, yes sir. How's everybody doing today? Glad to see everybody in the house. Let us know that you're here. Let us know you're watching. If you're on the replay gang, hashtag replay gang in the comments. But tonight's just going to be a little chill episode. Again, thank you everybody for coming through this evening. Really appreciate you all. Let us know that you're watching in the chat, whether on my channel or Mark's channel. Um, we're just going to be relaxing tonight. We do have a few things, uh, you know. That we want to talk about. There's a lot going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. A whole lot going, whole lot going on in the world. We didn't even talk about Israel and Iran in the pre-chat thing. No, we didn't. No, we did and not. That's it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I it's crazy. I shouldn't say. You know, I mean, I'm sure there. I mean, there's a lot of talk about that, and and then last week was the eclipse, right? That's right. That's right. But we didn't talk about that at all, and. Uh, yeah, we are still here, know, though. The rapture didn't here. happen. We're still here. You know, the end of the world. Jesus Jesus hasn't fully returned yet. You know, I don't have a glorified body. You don't have a glorified body, you know. So, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of jokers are are, are absolutely uh, out of their minds. <laughs> Insane. 
what what was it with the eclipse? I mean, why why were people saying it's this eclipse? This is the thing. Was there some reasoning behind it, or they? I mean, they obviously people run the, run the scripture and and manufactured everything of of their of their devices and made it seem like something that it wasn't. Um, uh, Virginia wasn't really in the in the path, so. Um, I mean, I looked out, looked out my window. I was like, "Oh, it looks different outside." <laughs> um, but I mean, Nehemiah was not. He was not enthralled at all. So um, not, he was not like, impressed. Where is, it? where is where is the eclipse? <laughs> he was he was he was not impressed at all. Um, well, you know, where, was if you went to Montana, was it in the was it in the little X or no? I I couldn't even tell you. I didn't even okay. think about it that much. Okay. But you know that makes me think of kind of Mount Rushmore a little bit. You go for a family vacation. You bring your kids to Mount Rushmore. They see the rocks with faces on it. They're like, "Oh, that's cool." And then they're like, "You know, <laughs> let's go do something else." Ten seconds later, after they see the faces, right? So yeah, yeah. Ten seconds later, yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But like I said earlier in the, in the chat, uh, we will have some, uh, you know, time to ask us anything if you want to. Um, also we're going to have some Bible trivia. We have some easy, easy, easy questions. Hopefully they're easy for you all. Uh, and then we do have some hard, harder, um, reformed Bible trivia. So if you want to go into the reform, the depths of the reform doctrine, we have some questions for that as well. Um, but yeah, what else is new, man? We haven't, I think we haven't had a show in like a week or two. So what, what, what else is new? I know well, a lot, we of, even a lot had of people a, are talking about a lot of stuff. We haven't had a show since, uh, our discussion, our historic pre-mill discussion. Yeah, it was great. And that was so how good. did, how do you think that went? Yeah. I think it went really good. Um, everybody contributed so well to it. Um, and we literally, um, Pastor Greg sent us a message this morning, uh, so, and I wanted to share that with everybody. Um, he says, I wanted to share with you all the report that I got from an older couple in my church who sat to watch the playback of our combo. They were blessed by it. We had a variety of we have a variety of views in our congregation, even among our elders. And this couple comes from churches that never discuss eschatology. So they admit that it can be a bit confusing. However, Although they said a bit about our discussion went over their heads, the basic presentation of uh, historic premillennial, premillennialism to them appeared to them to be that which best comports with what they read in scriptures. So, I mean, that's amen and amen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I sent, uh, I put on, hosted on Facebook like a few weeks ago, or maybe last week, before, a few days ago, days are running together. Um, I, I put in the chat, chat GPT, like, uh, like eight points of historic premillennialism and like, it's bad out some good stuff. Like, um, like in, in with a defense of historic premillennialism and, um, about the early church fathers, just scriptures and, and uh, how it ties with covenant theology. Um, so it was, it was good. It was real good, but that's, yes, that's where I stand. Um, and I think we do have to have another night just because I know there's, you know, shouts out to Eschatology Matters. You know what I'm saying? Those brothers go hard in the paint and they they do represent post mill and on mill really well. But we need we need a historic pre mill channel out here like mm -hmm. that's really standing for, you know, the truth of Scripture. So yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we definitely have to have another night. I do appreciate all the guys. That came on. Uh, we did have one one brother that was wasn't able to come on, um, but uh, we definitely have to have a part two. Uh, even um, Violet was asking for a part two, and she's that post mill. So we definitely need to have a part part two of of uh, historic pre mill night. You know, we should do a, a night looking just looking at the Royal Psalms. Yeah, uh, as well. So yeah, absolutely. I agree. I definitely definitely agree. Um, and, and, you know, being historic pre-mill, 
uh, a while ago, for some reason, I, I can't even remember why, I was looking through the story of King Solomon. And King Solomon, his reign is known as, you know, peaceful. And not only peaceful, he's wise. And Israel is, is at its height of glory during the reign of King Solomon. And, uh, you know, but his reign actually began with a bunch of bloodshed as you had different people conspire against King Solomon. Uh, and I think, you know, perhaps speculation, you'll see something similar with the Lord Jesus Christ. As he, as he returns, you'll see a bunch of, he, to quote John Piper, he's going to kill a bunch of people. Is that what he says? What does John Piper say? Uh, About the new heaven and new earth? Well, no, no. He had a discussion with Doug Wilson. And, and in that conversation, he essentially oh. said, Jesus is coming back. He's going to kill a bunch of people. Uh, and then they go from there. You know, the, that would be part of my view as well. And then there's this unprecedented piece, like in the reign of King Solomon, it'll be like, like that. But Jesus is the greater everything, the greater Moses, the greater David, the greater, just fill in the blank, uh, exponentially greater. You'll see an ex exponentially greater piece as well. So in, in the, yeah. So, uh, ju yeah. just a rant. That's a random thought. A very and, random uh, there's thought. another random question in the chat. And I think Doki might've came in on the, on the back end, but he said, how come we got left? Behind? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Brother, we didn't get left behind. All those, all those false prophets and false teachers were, were, were lying to their people, and um, hopefully they retracted their statement. We're still here. Uh, Jesus did not physically return, and, and we do not have our glorified bodies. There's still temptation. There's still sin. There's still um, all that bad stuff in the world. So, yeah, brother. Now, were there any mainstream or, or famous people saying, this is it? It's going to be the eclipse on the what eighth or whatever? I don't think so. I don't think there was any like mainstream or there might have been internet YouTube people, but um, like mainstream, mainstream people. I don't think they were like, this is the date. I don't think so. Some people says 40 days after the eclipse. So um, we'll see about that. Oh, <laughs> but they said, some people said 40 days after the eclipse. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they did the calculations. I don't know what scriptures they're using, but yeah. So we'll, 40 days, Mark. Your days are numbered. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to revise it like what what was 88 reasons why Christ is coming back in 1988 doesn't happen. Yeah. So then you revise 89 reasons why Christ is coming back in 1989. <laughs> the 89th reason he didn't come back in 1988. So, you know, that's that's how it would go probably, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we were, Doki, we were definitely going to touch touch on that a little bit. Uh, Mark, what's your what's your take on on the Driscoll situation that you know that we talked about briefly before? What day did that happen? Did that happen what two days ago? That happened, I think, um, Friday Friday or Saturday last week. Oh, so I'm living under a rock or something? Yeah, I mean, well, first off, if you're a Christian, where should you get your news from? Probably the Babylon Bee. I checked the Babylon Bee for all of my news. That's how I found about you know out about the Mark Driscoll thing. Um, it, to me, it's the best source of news out there. And what they, they, you know, what did they say, <laughs> what, did, what did they say? Oh, I'm trying to think. I, it might have been not the B, to be honest, that, that that broke that one or something. But I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, I checked out Mark Driscoll. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, I guess a ministry. Um, a while ago, because well, first off, I listened to the Mars Hill podcast um, about his ministry, which is addicting. You listen to one episode, and then pretty soon you just listen to them all because they're it, it's really well done, I think. Um, but but then a, a while ago, I checked out. Hey, what's he saying now? Is he way out there? What's going on? And uh, you know, I. I guess I'm neutral. I, I don't really have any, you know, much thoughts on it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny because that's true about leaning real news out of parody. <laughs> true. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, 
the situation unfolded over a certain amount of days. So in the beginning, it was like, oh, he re he rebuked him, and then the be and then again was like more information was revealed. So yes, he re he rebuked him for having, uh, you know, a man on a pole and swallowing a sword and stuff like that. Um, and that that guy d does this. He was on America's Got Talent. Like he he, that's what he does for a living. Um, but then the the talk was about uh why is this all being done at a men's conference like the man on a pole with the sword um monster trucks like where's the word of god like like we like we in the earlier in the um the video that you played earlier like we need the word of god preached men especially need the word of god preached they need each other they need community they, they need the word they don't need entertainment um and like the whole thing was set up like an entertainment fiasco. Uh, so that, that was that. Um, and then the pastor comes out saying, you know, you're, you're done, you're off, whatever. And he gets off the stage and then he comes on stage saying Matthew 18, that's a stretch because, you know, Mark didn't necessarily sin against him personally. However, you know, more stuff was uncovered. Mark knew about this event. He knew what was going on with the, all on the weekend he could have decided to go or not to go um and these they talked 30 minutes before the before he got on stage or whatever, whatever case may be so he could have he could have said something to him about this um then more stuff was revealed and more stuff came out mm -hmm. the pastor brought him back on stage they was like patting each other on the back and then mark retracted his statement so it's like what did you say that for and come to find out, he has a book about Je Jezebel spirits. So it's like, was this all a ploy? Was this all publicity for your book? Um, mm -hmm. So it's like the whole the whole joint is just is just crazy. And you know, we could say that a little bit in that years and years ago. Was it was it when the the John MacArthur Study Bible came out? It, it must have been a long time after it came out. Um, but he came to an event, the John MacArthur debacle. Uh, yeah, with Mark yeah, he, he, yeah. He came, it was a Shepherd's Conference event, actually. There, oh, there we go. That so it was yeah. more the event and less the that Bible coming out. Yeah, it was um, a Shepherd's Conference, and then he, I guess, he was outside handing out his books and stuff like that to people that was in in attendance. Mm -hmm. So um, if this if this is Pastor Jeff Downs, salute to you, Pastor. Um, he is a pastor within my area, um, if that is who I think it is. Um, mm -hmm. But salute to that brother. He is he is an amazing pastor. He is a, a a Presbyterian Reformed brother. So if that is Pastor Jeff, salute to you, my friend. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I mean, so men's conference. Let's draw a crowd or churches just in general. You know what. One of my favorite quotes is Charles Spurgeon. I'm going to butcher it. Uh, but the general thought is if people will not come to hear the gospel to church, um, attract them by no other means. Uh, so mm -hmm. in other words, Hey, we're not going to resort. Hey, you don't, the gospel isn't enough to bring you to church. Um, you want entertainment and you, that kind of stuff. Well, you know, we're not going to resort to that. If the gospel isn't good enough for you, then essentially just good riddance kind of thing. Cause we're yeah, not I mean, going to abandon the gospel to uh, appeal to other things that we think, Oh, the gospel, it'll never work. So we'll try to entertain people and that right. will eventually work because the gospel just can't do it in preaching who God is and scripture that that would never work. So, you know, at the end of the day, when people resort to, entertainment and these kind of things it's because they don't believe in the power of the gospel they don't believe in the power of of god's word essentially so yeah god's god's word is what it's 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 truly what does what god wants it to do not entertainment because what um the old saying is what you draw them with is what you have to keep them with mm -hmm. so it's like men if you want it's like the strong it's what's called a stronger men's conference like if you want men to be strong stop entertaining us there's enough entertainment we could watch that any there's, there's enough entertainment we need the word of god you know well, and lost lost and always like 
stop. We need we need man of God to preach the word or whatever he, whatever he said. But well, literally, that's what we need. In churches, I mean, it's an infection. Churches right now, t- everywhere. Go on YouTube, church in the glades, and and that spread like wildfire to tons of churches out there where entertainment is just used to draw people like a magnet uh, to churches and everything. Um, Absolutely. Shouts out to everybody in the chat. I see, I see you all in the chat. I don't know what happened to my co-host, but I'm still here. I will. Um, but sh- shouts out to everybody in the chat. I'm sure he'll he'll be back. Um, there he is. There he is. I don't know what. <laughs> I press some button. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was those forty days, brother. You got forty days. You got forty days. You got, you got forty days. Um, but shouts out to everybody in the chat. Um, thank you all for coming through again. Please let us know that you're here. You're watching the replay, gang. Let us know you are watching on the replay, gang. Thank you. Oh yeah, the eclipse got. <laughs> thank you, Doki, go. for for the love, brother. Really appreciate it. Um, and I got we got we got Eric Smith in the chat. Uh, I'll let you answer this, my brother. What do you guys think of the popularity of Open Theus like Idol Killer and JP Uncut? Is JP Uncut an Open Theist? What, is how, a, he's, how, he, how is he? He's not proclaimed Open Theist, but how he uh-huh. talks and, and things like that, it, it's, it seems in a way that he is. I won't, I won't say that because he hasn't bluntly said that, but um, Idol Killer definitely is. Um, but JP Uncut, how he explains some of the stuff he believes, it seems. Yeah. It seems. Yeah. I I'm not familiar with Idol Killer. You might have sent me the video. Well, of JP Uncut and a, a Calvinist. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so you know, just logically, the way I think about it, when I hear a lot of people talk, um, open theists will make the the argument that hey. Arminians, you aren't consistent with your worldview. Mm-hmm. And I, I completely agree with, with open theists. They're, they're not consistent and praise God, they're not consistent. Um, and they would, Arminians would reject open theism. Um, but, you know, I'm one of those folks. A while ago, there was a discussion within evangelicalism. Should open theists be allowed within mainstream Christianity, mainstream evangelicalism? And the, the response was no, um, it, it it should not. And you had some Armenians object to that and say, no, open theists should be welcomed with, with open arms just as much as those who believe in the doctrines of grace and everything. No, I would consider open theism to be a heresy. And you can only butcher so many of the attributes of God, his, you know, uh, his immutability would be one for sure that they would severely twist before you know you have a different god so but i i haven't heard jp talk about open theism um i've heard even in mainstream evangelicalism i've heard what i would consider to be basic open theism Uh, you know an example would be oh hey we're taking communion and someone talking about jesus christ gave his life you know, 2000 years ago with no guarantee that you and me or that any believers would follow Jesus Christ and choose him, that kind of thing. Wow. Well, that, that really reeks of open theism, but that yeah. would be in mainstream evangelicalism. And if you really challenged youth who don't have a, oh, who, who haven't gone in deep in scripture, and you, you know, you presented the doctrine predestination or free will or open theism or different views. A lot of them, I think, would pick open theism. I, I really think a lot would. So, yeah, I think so. All right. Yeah. So um, back to your question, Eric, I think um, I think JP is just popular just because of his other channels and just because he is who he is um, and he has a he has a following already from his other channel um and he's he's i think he's confident um controversial and that 
obviously just draws a crowd, but he just has people following him. So, um, you know, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's what it is. And he's just willing to talk. Like I, I um, he's willing to talk to anybody. He doesn't care who it is. And, yep. uh, you know, he, he does give and, people an outlet to talk. Yeah. I've done videos with them and yeah. You know, we've talked a little while ago and said, hey, let's have a conversation or debate, you know, um, as well. We could have him on the show, I bet you, yeah. pretty soon. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he, 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 would, be, he would definitely be willing to do, do that. Um, but, brother, have you seen the um, OSAS, One Saved, Always Saved documentary? I haven't. Okay, Where do you I'll, I'll have to send it to you. So it's basically a whole lot of Armenians talking about how, you know, once they've always saved is false. Um, and they just twist scripture to a T. Is it um, a certain denomination or group or? Uh, no, no, no. They're, they just seem to be Ar Armenian in, in a way. They're, it's not a certain denomination, but mm. it's what, it, what they seem to be um, presenting um, is, uh, uh free grace not true you know perseverance of the saints um it, it doesn't necessarily um present that at all it seems to be literally they are fighting against free grace but again a lot of the scriptures that we we stand on that we believe in um that a christian that uh, jesus will not lose his sheep um they they just really kind of butcher and take out of context but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll definitely I'll definitely send it to you, bro. I'll, I'll yeah. definitely send it to you. I mean, uh, growing up in the Assembly of God, I remember hearing about "Once Saved, Always Saved" many, many times in Sunday school class and everything. And it's generally, um, just remembering from when I was a kid, it's always presented as if, hey, you say the prayer, you commit your life to Christ once, and then you can live like a devil the rest of your life, and you think. And you believe that you're saved, and that's what they teach, kind of thing. That's a misrepresentation for sure. Yeah. That would be more the free grace kind of thing for sure. Yeah. 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 I think that's literally what they're trying to refute, but obviously they're just throwing everything all in, in, in one basket there. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, and there's really the rock solid verse. The, um that reform folks would quote would be my sheep um hear my voice and i know them they follow me um and part of the arminian's argument is well you know sheep can choose to basically eventually not follow christ mm -hmm. but the right. text says they follow me and so you're making up stuff. You're not submitting yourself to the text is my thought on that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just one verse out of the, out of the whole link of verses, but yes, I, I completely understand. Um, so uh, Elizabeth says, have you heard the rumor of Disney that brought rights to Bible? I did, but found it's not true, but many believers are taking, thinking it to be true. Huh? Yeah. I haven't, that's the first I've heard of it. It's a Bible. Huh? Yeah. First I've first I've heard of that. Um I didn't Yeah. Jumping questions. Um let's see. Jeremiah is asking a question. Why are the scriptures not carried anymore on the Ark of the Covenant? Why are this why are the scriptures not carried anymore in the Ark of the Covenant? You got me. Yeah, you got me too, Jeremiah. If you want to put that the answer in the chat, go ahead, go for it. Um yeah, why are the scriptures not carried anymore on the Ark of the Covenant? I'm, I'm, you got you got me there. Um I will ask a few bible trivia questions nehemiah was supposed to come on and say hello to the people but he, he never came on um also um we will eventually be back in our book um discovering the glorious gospel uh we are on like chapter 
was it 17? No, not 17. We want chapter 21, I believe. Um, so we, we went over a whole lot. What do you guys feel about a certain kind of behavior? Oh, I'm not even, I, 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 I don't know I if you want to talk about that, Mark. I, I really don't feel like talking about it. Like the, that guy uh -huh. has, he has no time on his hands. Like I, I, I was going to say, Daryl can talk about Daryl could talk about this for weeks and weeks and weeks. I bet. No, I you tend you tend to stay away from drama for sure. Yeah, um, I, I don't care. Like it's it's he's just doing it for views. I I don't care. Like you know that brother is a good brother. I don't know who this oh, yeah. who the person is. Um, I don't really care. <laughs> and you know, I just mm -hmm. I I really just pray that like. He, he just repents. I, I really pray that mm -hmm. he repents because he's just, he does stuff for views, obviously. So, yeah. Uh, well, I'll say I've done videos on, on him in the past, but it's been, it's been about a year or so. It's been a very good vacation, very stress, <laughs> uh, very stress free. Stress free. And uh, <laughs> just the way I like it. And, uh, the last time I did a video was probably a year ago, you know, because I doubled down on that. That's it's a cult is what people are dealing with on that channel. Yeah. That's a cult. It's not a ministry. It is a, uh, it's a cult with good doctrine, but horrible practice. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I might, I might do another video. I mean, likening that cult to the view and gossip, because I mean, it's one in the same, you know, so that's my really that's my thought on that is yeah. it, you know if you want to if you want some good gossip where do you go go watch the view or go watch that channel over there yeah. you'll get yeah. some extraordinary gossip over there uh but god god hates those kind of things uh yeah, absolutely so, mm -hmm. absolutely and um uh i always want to call this guy like pastor or reverend doctor but uh eric smith had uh, definitely great um scriptures he pointed to uh look up proverbs 26 verse 21 through 28 um and yes brother eric thank you very much um but yeah like i you know and and i appreciate i i appreciate the vacation that you take brother and sometimes i don't like i'm like come on brother come on and then brother's like yeah we can do it today oh no nah, let's take this week <laughs> but i'm just like you know, I, I appreciate that because like YouTube has become like a, a um, one of my, one of my friends, the group chat, a dumpster fire. Like Christian YouTube is like this person talking about this person, that person talking about that person It's like, OK, like, are we going to glorify Christ? Are we going to really point people to the scriptures? So like that's why I appreciate when Mark, you know, brought these books up. He was just like, let's let's literally let's talk about the word. Let's talk about who God is. Let's talk about the gospel. Um, so I appreciate that. We might not get thousands of views and all that good stuff but we're we're literally pointing people to the scriptures and pointing people to jesus um and that's uh, mm -hmm. for me that's 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 important you know um and anybody that's watching yeah. now or in the future like if if mm -hmm. you don't know who jesus is go back to the first three minutes of this video he, he will tell you the gospel um but th that's my main thing is for people to know jesus um because without him there's no hope without him you do deserve hell. You do de deserve God's judgment. But there's, the good news is that Christ came. Jesus came. The God man came to this earth, lived a perfect life, died a brutal death on a cross for the sins of his people. Three days later, he physically literally rose from death. He ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of power right now, ruling and reigning right now. And he will one day come again to judge the living and the dead. And if you're found in him, glory be to God. You have the grace and mercy of God. But if you're not found in him, there, there's no hope. There's only damnation for you. And that's all we deserve is, is God's justice in hell because of our sin against a holy, righteous God. But the good news is Jesus Christ came, lived perfectly died on the cross rose again for those who would repent and believe in him so just i i i beg you i implore you 
give your life to Christ. If if you if you have not trusted in Christ already, I I, I implore you to do that tonight. Um, but that's what my channel is about. And I know Mark, um, you know, over these over this past year and some change, like he he really just wanted to talk about the word. So again, I appreciate that. Well, you know, and that goes back to if if you have a channel and hit the gospel you don't believe in the power of the gospel and uh to you know to feed people and to uh just gain people's attention and so you have to attract them with gossip and with drama hey you know goodbye that kind of thing so um but yeah, you know, I I do kind of miss a lot of channels are are the more discernment channels, and there was a big discussion about this oh a year or two ago on how much a YouTube channel should be just discernment and um, you know correcting false teaching and and false teachers and there's some drama that can come with that um, as yeah. well. So yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, thank you, Mary. Um, I'll, I will be actually, I do still go to the detention center once or twice a month. Um, so I'll be going actually this Thursday. So keep that in prayer. Um, but I, I will be preaching Lord willing in, in, in May, uh, at my local church. So I'm excited about that. Um, definitely, definitely excited about that. Um, but yeah, we do have, we do have a few people in the, the chat. So let's, Let's go to some of these uh, some of these trivia questions, um, and I think one night we do need to talk about um, perseverance of the saints, and how God keeps His people. Um, I think that would be a, a great night to to have some have some good brothers and sisters on to talk about that. Um, Jeremiah uh, seems to want uh, to want to talk about that. Um, so yeah, we can we can absolutely absolutely talk about that. That would be that would be great. But um. I'm going to throw some softballs out there first. Um, so everybody participate. Everybody participate. Get your fingers ready. Um, if you're driving, maybe use a voice note or something like that. I want to see who can answer this question first, okay? Um, again, I'll throw a softball out there. Um, yeah, I'll throw a softball out there first, and then we can go to the hard, harder harder things. Uh, what was the name of the woman who who anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume? Who was the name of the woman who anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume? Who was the name of the woman who anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume? Thank you, Elizabeth. You just parked. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Mary. All right. Mary. No name. No name, Mary. Okay. Mary. Okay. So the first person to answer the question, kind of halfway, Elizabeth said Mary too. But Mary what? Mary Mary of what? Who was the name of the woman who anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume? That's, uh, we got Mary. We got, we got three Marys, and then we got a Mary with no name. It was um, um, there. You go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, okay. Mary Magdalene. There you. There you go. There. There you go. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. 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 All right. Let's see here. Ask your questions, Jeremiah. We got. We got. Ask your questions. Come on. Um. All right. What was the name of the Roman governor who sentenced Jesus to be crucified? What was the name of the Roman governor who sentenced Jesus to be crucified? What was the name of the Roman governor who sentenced Jesus to be crucified? Pilate. Yes, there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right, all right. Sister Haley's in the building. What's up? What's up? All right. Yes. Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. All right. Good money. Good money. Okay. Let me go to the harder one. This is this is the re this is the reformed Bible trivia questions. Uh, yeah, those were the softballs to to get your self esteem up and all that this before is, we this is, this tear is, it down. This is gonna be um because I 
Yeah. So what are the five solas? What are the five yeah. solas? What are the five solas? I'll start off with that. What are the five solas? And I know it might take a little bit longer for you to for you to type, but what what are the five solas? And I then I have like a, a part a, a second part of that question. But what are the five solas of the Protestant Reformation? What are the five solas of the Protestant Reformation? I wish I had the Jeopardy music. Oh, no. Either that or um, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Like how they how they have that music. <laughs> what are the five solos of the Protestant Reformation? All right, we got we got Mary. She typed faith alone, Christ, God's grace, Scripture to the glory of God alone. We got those five. All right, all right. Good to see you. Good to see you, brother Jason. Good to see you. All right, we got uh, time here. Says, oh, he, he went, he went deep. Okay, sola scriptura, so, sola Christus, sola fide, sola gratia, sola deo gloria. All right. Yep, we, this is the hard stuff now. This is this is the hard stuff now. This is the the reformed uh, Bible trivia, um, and they have like two parts to the one question, but. Because everybody's typing in the chat, I won't. I won't ask the two parts. Um, ah, whew. what are the? What is the reformed view of the extent of the atonement? What is the reformed view of the extent of the atonement? What is the reform view of the extent of the atonement? Yes, limited. Okay. So time, because you were so quick, and anybody else that's typing still, um, what does limited atonement mean? What's the meaning behind limited atonement? All right, Christ's atonement covers all who come. So yeah, what is the meaning behind limited atonement? How is it? How is the extent of the atonement limited? Why is it what there? Okay, mm -hmm. to the elect only, Mary says, and it covers all who come. Limited for the elect, limited to those who are chosen. Farmer Dan, all right. The atonement is safe, but applies only to the elect. All right. Sufficient for all, but applies only to the elect. All right, all right, all right. Okay, all right. I'll throw two more softballs. And then I'll go back to the reformed, reformed uh, Bible trivia. Again, this is softball. Really, really. Okay, here we go. Oh, well, there you go. Thank you. Let me tell me Christ died to atone for the sins of his people, the ones he would choose elect. Okay. All right. What was the name of the apostle who replaced Judas after the, his betrayal of Jesus? What was the name of the apostle who, who replaced Judas after his betrayal of Jesus? And, then, and, and if you have your biblical knowledge backed up with that, where is that found in Scripture? So the name of the apostle who replaced Judas after his betrayal of Jesus, and then bonus, where where is that found in scripture? So yep, Matthias, good job, good job, good job, Mary, good job. All right, and where where is that necessarily found in scripture? All right, thank you. Good money. All right, all right, all right. What was the name of the mountain where Jesus was transfigured before his disciples? 
What was the name of the mountain where Jesus was transfigured before his disciples? It's easy. That's the mountain of transfiguration. That, <laughs> that is correct. Anybody Dude. know the anybody know the 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 uh the 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 real name of the mountain? The real name of the mountain. <laughs> Anybody know the the yeah so yes the mountain of transfiguration but does anybody know the real name of the mountain? It starts with a T. I'll say that, and it's not transfiguration. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the name of the mountain where Jesus was transfigured before his disciples? I got Jaden in the chat. Mount of Olives. No, it starts with a T. It's a Mount something. Starts with a T, ends with an R. How about that? You can play Hangman. It starts with a T, ends with an R, and it's only five letters. There you go. Thank you. Good money time. Good money time. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Now we go back to the Reformed Q&A. Now we'll go back to the Reformed Q&A. Um, this has eight answers. Described the Reformed Order of Salvation, Order Salutis. Describe the Reformed Order of Salvation. There's eight parts. And this outlines the, the sequence of how God works salvation in the lives of the elect. So outline the eight steps of Reformed Order Salutis or Order of Salvation. And there's a, there's eight answers from beginning to end. Romans eight, Mary says Romans eight. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy way out. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh man. <laughs> That's all good. You're you're chopping cilantro. It's all good. <laughs> that was awesome. Mm -hmm. That was awesome, Mary. That was really good. Describe the reformed order of salvation. Again, there's uh eight answers. Uh there's eight order of uh, order salutis. Oh, cool, 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 cool. All right, bringing groceries in. But yes, um, eight steps of order of salvation. Just outlines the sequence of how God works salvation in the lives of the elect. All right, we got Pastor E in the house. What's up, Pastor E? What's going on? We got Iron Matt in the house. What's up? We are doing Bible trivia right now. So we got some heavyweights in the house. Right now, the question is, we are doing right now what describe the reformed order of salvation describe the reformed order of salvation oh good money yeah he got that beer coming back for real for real yeah. absolutely all right here we go so in the reform camp the order of salutus, uh, salutus is election predestination in christ uh, atonement, gospel call, inward call, regeneration, conversion, faith and repentance, justification, and sanctification. All right. <laughs> Doki Doki said, Alexa, tell me the eight steps of salvation. Don't type it, just search. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is um... awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, what you got, Mark? Because uh, I saw you write them down over there. What you got? Well, you know, uh, how much can you dissect and break it down? You know, election, foreknowledge, predestination. And, you know, when we talk to Arminians about it, you know, I always say, hey, these are things that happen in the life of every Christian, every, per every believer who's ever exactly. been you know, alive, these things happen in their life. Um, every believer is elected, foreknown, predestined. And so could you say that's three different things or two different things? You know, 
there's calling that happens to every believer adoption yep. there's regeneration repentance and faith i'd argue there's perseverance that happens in every believer sanctification and glorification you know and justification as well so you know i might break that down a bit more than most people and you could see some of those overlap and stuff but that's what i have <laughs> awesome 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 so yeah pastor e i know you're in here eric i know you're in here as well um and i'm matt and everybody doki doki we got alexa um and mary said he doesn't have alexa <laughs> that is awesome all right so yeah we have so reform view of order salutis um we have uh, predestination one we have effectual calling two regeneration three four faith five justification six adoption seven um, sanctification and eight glorification so you pretty much had it mark just you just like you said dissected it more <laughs> in, in those terms so yeah yeah all right so what do you okay type a one in the chat if you want to go back to the easy stuff Type a two in the chat if you want to stay in the reformed, uh, reformed, uh, uh, reformed Bible trivia. So type Whoa. a one in the chat, easy. Two reformed. What's going on, uh, brother E? What's up, man? Mm -hmm. And let me interrupt for a second because we were talking about perseverance of the saints and doing a show on perseverance of the saints. And the Ordo Salutis is part of the reason why people should believe in perseverance of the saints. Do you know? There's Christians out there who would argue that there are people who, you know, had repentance and faith and who were regenerate, who spend eternity in hell. Help me make sense out of that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like literally all, all the blessings that we have in Christ, like you, you're, you're telling me every single one of the blessings that we have in Christ, we're adopted, we're justified, we're sealed, we're, we're called, we're in the beloved like every single blessing were chosen before the foundation of the world our names are written in the book of life like we the bible says we're blessed and we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the, in the heavenly realms like we're, we're we're blessed as christians we are blessed it talks about how we're seated at the right hand of the father like we're 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 seated in the, in the heavenly places it says i'm sorry in ephesians 2 we're seated in the heavenly places in christ like all of those blessings in Christ can just be taken away. Mm -hmm. Can be literally just taken away. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> like, like, well, oh. and then how do you get regenerate people? Cause they would say, Hey, they were regenerate. They were yeah. born again, spend eternity in hell. Did they become unregenerate? I, I can't wrap my brain around that. So, yeah. Yeah. So when, when you watch that uh, documentary, you're going to be like, are you serious? <laughs> and these regenerate people, were they elected and predestined? Like all, all of that, like that, all of that has to be just taken away. And, and so all that unity and harmony is, it's just destroyed. If you believe, uh, you know, if, if someone rejects perseverance of the saints, so yeah absolutely all right so let's see what we got here we got okay we got two twos all right we got one one so two to one we got three bring it out bring it we got life on easy street so that's probably a one so it's two to two right now one three to two all right so we got easy street for right now i'm okay we'll go back to easy street and then we'll come back to the reform um Performed uh, Q and A here. All right, here we go. What was the name of the son of Isaac who was tricked into giving his birthright to his younger brother Jacob? What was the name of the son of Isaac who was tricked into giving his birthright to his younger twin brother Jacob? Who was the who was the name of the son of Isaac who was tricked into giving his birthright to his younger Twin brother Jacob, right? 
We got Esau. We got Esau. We got all right. Everybody's everybody. Good money. Good money. Good money. Yeah, time. Exactly. They were never regenerated if they lost it uh, through some. Yeah. Throw it out of the, throw that out of the Bible. Uh, uh, Philippians 1, 6, especially if you believe that it's all a work of. Yeah. The salvation is all a work of the Lord. Like, yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. All right, we're going back to the hard stuff. We got about 55 minutes and um, Brother Eric's got it dropped in three minutes. So, um, ooh, oh. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. Um, hopefully Pastor E is still here, but describe... The reformed understanding of the regulative principle of worship. Describe the reform oh. understanding of the regulative principle of worship. Describe the reform understanding of the regulative principle of worship. See that's that's really that's really reformed there. <laughs> Describe the reformed understanding of the regulative principle of worship. If if uh if if Pastor Ryan from my church was in in the chat, he would he would jump on that because <laughs> we had a whole whole podcast about that. Describe the reformed understanding of the regulative principle of worship. <laughs> oh man describe the reformed understanding of the regulative principle of worship you don't know no no mary you don't have to be presby you don't have to be, some reformed baptists follow that too you don't you don't have to be presby <laughs> would you say john MacArthur holds to it or i haven't watched this full service in view but he's probably close to it. I don't think he's like gung ho, like you must do this. But I'm sure he's probably close to it. Because I, I, people try. I, I've heard Vody Balcom just, you know, describe it, and it still goes over my head. I'm still like I, I still don't get it because it seems to me like there's different shades of it. But yeah, different. Yeah, you, that's true. Um, so time says we must worship God in the way that he has revealed himself in the way that he's commanded us to worship him in his word. Um, thank you, time. Uh, Eric says regular pr principle, simply put, if the scripture lays it out, you do it. All right. Anybody else before I reveal what the answer G3 has a video. Yep. Yeah. Pastor Scott um, and he Scott annual. He's actually um, historic pre mill too. just just FYI. He is historic pre mill. So, hey, Green, good to see you. Got Nehemiah in the house. What's up, man? Hello, everyone. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing? I tried to get you to come in earlier. What's up? I'm doing good. Doing good? Uh-huh. Cool. We're going we're gonna to do a live probably later this week, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, want, he said he want, you want to go live? Oops. Yes. So you, you had to come up with an agenda then. Make sure you come up with an agenda so we don't just be sitting here looking at the camera okay. like crazy people. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Good money. All right, son. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. Close the door behind you. Um. So, hey, little man. Uh, yeah, he did. He did pass away. Um, Jerry Seville. He did. He did pass away yesterday. Um, I just found that out today. Um, but the answer that uh, it says the regulative principle states that in worship the church should only do what is explicitly commanded in Scripture. And should avoid elements of worship not prescribed by God. This is contrasted with the normative principle, which allows anything not explicitly for, forbidden. So obviously, you know, six flags over Jesus, they would absolutely not follow the regulative principle of worship because yeah. they'll have a trampoline and jumping jacks and, you know, all that, all that jazz. Uh, yeah. And, you know, what we talked about earlier, they would not Where have. Is the other view would say, if scripture doesn't forbid it, go for it, do it. You're free to do as you please, as long as scripture doesn't forbid it. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you have a lot more leeway 
to go whichever way direction you want to go so yeah so yeah but yeah um uh, mary yeah reform baptist they 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 stick to the the rpw as well um but good good uh, good uh good catch there we we we, we all love one another if we're two so, brothers and sisters in Christ, you know we, we love one another uh -huh. not everybody has but to be presbyterian they should but not everybody has to be presbyterian uh -huh. When when it's phrased this this way though, you know, if, if scripture uh let's see, somebody put if scripture lays it out, you do it. Youth groups, children's church. How is that a non-issue with the regulative principle, or does it speak into that? Or thoughts on that? So yeah, the regulative principle uh refers in particular to the, the Sunday morning worship. Um but again, your church should have guidelines of, yeah, how is small groups ran or Bible study ran or children's ministry or youth group and stuff like that. Um, but I, I believe the, the regulative principle uh, necessarily deals with the Sunday morning Lord's Day worship. Um, and it, does it speak into which instruments a person uses? That truly depends on the denomination because like some denominations i know um some some presbyterian denominations they literally just do piano some of them don't do any instruments at all um i was listening they, to a, a pastor preach once and he was preaching on christianity in like the 1700s or something mm -hmm. and he said that when it was either the organ or the piano first came out you know, churches called it the devil's instrument. That kind of thing. <laughs> you know, where that was the reaction, what, 300 years ago or something. So, yeah, yep, absolutely. So, um, you know, it, it all depends, like for the um, PCA, the denomination that I'm in, um, you know, we followed the uh, BCO and the BCO has a lot of a lot of guidelines for for worship service and, and things like that. I actually went to a Presbyterian meet, uh, Presbyterian meeting past saturday and um it was good uh, just to see just to see exactly how they handle business at the presbytery level um all all the elders in the denomination they get together and anybody that wants to come get together they talk about church business um locally um and then also as a as a presbytery uh and then also men get called to to the ministry like if you are going to for license to preach or if you're going to be um, going for your to be an elder, whether a ruling elder or, or teaching elder, you get examined. If you're going to be uh, transferring from a different presbytery to uh, a different presbytery, um, there's a whole nother examination. Um, so it's it's a rigorous process. I can speak for for me for the PCA. Um, it's a rigorous process to become an elder. Um, uh, either ruling or teaching elder is a rigorous process to be licensed to preach. Um, it's a, a rigorous process because uh, you got to go through written exams, mm -hmm. multiple questions. Um, and I don't know if Pastor Jeff is still in the chat, um, but he he's he's a, he was a pastor in in the PCA. I think he's OPC now. Um, but uh, it's a rig and OPC is even OPC is even harder because they go hard in the paint with the biblical questions. You go through a written exam and an oral exam. So, uh, so time says depends who you ask. Instruments. I came out of IFB. If songs were written after a certain year, the church would not allow it. No drums, only piano. Yep, absolutely. You know, but each each IFB is different, though. They're That's all correct. And every single one of them. I mean, there's a lot of commonality between them and unity and everything. But you know, they're diff They're independent. They're different. Out of curiosity, though, time. What's your view, pre-millennial, post-mill? What do you still have the same kind of eschatology that IFB has? Generally, I think they'd all be dispensational, if I understand mm -hmm. that right. Um, but you know, I was going to say, Daryl, we should do a a night and invite people with different views on Israel and Israel's role in the future, or or maybe they have no role in the future. Okay. who knows but that that, that, that would, would be, be good a good 
good thing to look into in the different views and probably hash that out a bit. So that would be good. I think um, it would take a lot of footwork because I would want to get Corey because obviously he's the only dispensational See, that I know. Time. Um, and I mean, you're, uh, what I'm scratching my head, we don't have any post mill folks in the chat that I know of right now. But uh, that's me if he's still here. Folks, but yeah, post mill folks, I think if I understand them right, you know, I want to represent them correctly or take lots of shots at them, one of the two. But you know, if I understand post mill folks right, Israel's role in the future is there is a future national repentance of Israel, and that's about it. I think, I, I think, is I that think. Being, is that fair to their view or is that? not fair so no, i think you're right bro I, I i do think you're right and, um, and if you ask him though hey if jesus christ when the lord jesus christ returns where is he returning to well i don't know is it israel or do you not know or you know what thoughts on that too so yeah no i think i think that would be a good night um yeah that we would really want to get like all views um present so that would be a good night it would take a probably a while to get everybody together but i, I can definitely definitely work on that uh time says does pco uh, pca require mdiv to be ordained i believe in certain for for te for teaching elder um yes um for re no to be licensed to preach no but to be a TE, yes. Uh, you for, to be a teaching elder, yes. You absolutely need. Um, you need. There's a lot of prerequisites. Um, um, you need both languages, Hebrew and Greek. Uh, you need internship. There's there's a lot of requirements for for TE. Uh, for RE, uh, for ruling elder, no. Um, but yeah, good 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 question. Uh, time says no. I'm. I'm Amil and no cessation. Uh, my hermeneutic is kind of new covenant theology with the nuance, but I was okay. So he was Dispy, but now he is Amil. All right. Good money. Good money. Good money. I appreciate everybody coming through tonight. I do have a lot more. Uh, th we might have to share this, sa save this for another night, but I do have a lot more uh, reform questions. Um, that might take a little bit more typing. So I'll say just for another another night um, that we have, uh, you know, just a free free Q and A. You know, talking about cessationists and continuationists, and you know, what is the reform view of the relationship between the old and the new covenant? So you know, I do have some more more questions that we can ask. Um, also about the sacraments um, and at, in the reform view. Um, so yeah that's a whole another uh ball game oh awesome Jaden awesome Jaden awesome Jaden awesome Jaden oh that that one's easy shoe height right shoe height <laughs> shoe <laughs> shoe height I think someone told me someone even shorter than shoe height but I forgot Bill dad the shoe height yep yeah, that's exactly right. Um, Good money. Yeah, Mary is Amil. That is correct. Mary is Amil. Cool. But yeah, maybe possibly next week um, we'll be back in the book, possibly, and we will figure out where we left off. <laughs> um, I know our chapter, the, the chapter that we're in is talking about the resurrection. Um and it's a, it's a lot of reading, so we might either break it out, talk about some other stuff and the book, um, or just break it up into two weeks because it's it's a whole lot of reading and not a lot of fill in the blanks. Um, but yeah, discovering the glorious gospel by Paul Washer, um, free book on the website, Reform Thought. Mm -hmm. right there, thank you, thank you. And, you know, Paul Washer has, I think it's five books like this. They're all free in on PDF on Google, mm -hmm. uh, which is really nice. I, I think the way it should be, I think Christians should offer um, 
material like this for free. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Time has a question about infant baptism. Um, yes, you should do it. Um, but uh, he says the closest thing he sees to infants and baptism is in the Bible is Moses in the basket. Laugh out loud. Um, but how in the PCA does mode of baptism matter for membership? So uh, in the PCA, they do all three. They do all three modes. Some some churches just lay their hands on, you know, get water, lay hands on the head, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Some do pouring. Some um, do um, pouring slowly over over the over the baby. Some do um, full immersion. And I'm not not just talking about infants. I'm talking about just all all the modes of uh, of baptism. And it truly depends on the local PCA church. Um, again, some just do get the water on their hand, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some pour. Uh, some some dip. Uh, or some do full immersion. So it truly depends on um, the local PCA congregation. And Matthew, uh, Dr. Matthew, Pastor, Dr. Ma Pastor Matthew Everhart has a great video about the modes of baptism. Um, he has a great, great video on that. Um, so, yeah. Latin Vulgate. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, okay. That that goes to what's that? What's that go to, brother? What's that? Yeah, there's the Dorian principle. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, we should chat sometime. Um, I could we could go another hour on this there, or just look it up. I've got it on my channel. It's on a lot of channels. It's out there. Type in Conley. Oh, you can type in Montana Viking Dorian principle or Conley Owens, Montana Viking, that kind of thing. Uh, but you know, the basic Dorian principle is that ministry ought to be supported, never sold, uh, which is, I think common sense. Um, you know, you can see this with pastors a lot of times back in the day, even pastors we love, they'd sell sermons. Well, the Dorian principle would have a heart attack uh, with something like that. Why? The, you know, Jesus Christ is the living water and we don't, we don't sell the living water under the Dorian principle. You know, we wouldn't sell, we wouldn't sell the gospel. We wouldn't sell, we don't sell ministry. Uh, instead, we ask people to um, support ministry. And so under the Dorian principle, there's no, I guess you call it reciprocity. Hey, you get the gospel, you get ministry. I get, now give me my money, that kind of thing. And so, you know, there's ministries out there who, that they've never heard about the Dorian principle, but intuitively they follow it um, because it makes sense. And you, whereas instances in scripture where we see it at work, you know, one instance would be with, um, I almost said King Naaman with Naaman in the old Testament, uh, the leper, right. And he, you know, he dunks in the, uh, what the Jordan, I believe it is it, seven times, not because he was not because, Oh, the fifth time, you know, uh, he didn't give up the sixth time. Oh, I'm not going to give up the seventh time. Oh, now I'm healed. And all the credit goes to him. No, it goes, all the glory goes to God. And after that whole escapade, Naaman tries to give a bunch of riches to, um, to the prophet there. And the prophet says, essentially, no, you keep that. Um, you keep it. And Gehazi is consumed with greed. He catches up to Naaman and says, no, we changed our mind. Give us all, give us your, I forget everything that Naaman was going to give, but give us all that stuff uh, for God healing you. Well, you know, there's a lesson on the gospel there in that God, hey, grace is unmerited favor. We can do nothing to to earn it or to buy it, that kind of thing. Uh, and so, you know, the, the gospel in ministry really is to be freely given, never sold. Uh, and so Conley Owens has uh, the Dorian Principle. It's a book and he gives away the How much does this book cost me? You know, he gives it away for free. Uh, he'll pay for shipping, that kind of thing. And so, you know, and this is areas where I think 
hey, we should always be reforming, right? Uh, we have a lot to, of work to do because there are reformed Christians selling selling Bibles under the Dorian principle. Would you sell a Bible? No, no, that that is unthinkable under the principle. Well, there's tons of Bibles for sale everywhere. Um, but uh, you know, if we get talking about the Dorian principle, then we'll never <laughs> we'll we'll never stop because well then how about a shirt? Can you sell a shirt that has a Bible verse on it? Um, or there's a Christian who puts a Bible ref John 3 16 or something on eggs. And so it can get very nuanced or complicated. But you know, as a general rule or principle, uh, ministry is always to be supported, never sold. So, so we, so we pray for, for people to come alongside of us who, who want to support those who are, you know, uh, preaching the gospel or, or ministering. So, yeah. So we can't Don. So Donald Trump is, he shouldn't be selling the, the American Bible or whatever Bible he was trying to sell last <laughs> a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and so the the dorian principle gets into the commercialization of christianity man the christianity is a multi what billion dollar business multi-million i mean it, it's very lucrative but hey if you're reformed is it biblical so yeah well that's just as bad so yeah. so jason i i mm -hmm. that's a that's a whole nother whole nother can of worms because it's like Okay, is that your job? Like, or is that just a side thing that you do? Um, so yeah, that's and, and that's something water. if you're on YouTube, I wrestle with it and I, I went from yes to no to yes. Um if you put um commercials or whatever on your videos, um should Christians put videos, you know, ads, I guess you call it on your uh on your channel. So that's something that, that you have to think about too. And is it okay to get paid for being on platforms like Spotify? You're that's getting more nuanced. But you know what I'd be more concerned of is oh hey, I've got this music, this song, it's the gospel, or you know, something like that. And hey, you can take it. Where's my money? Give me my money, that kind of thing. Um you know, I think that would not be okay under the principle. So, and that's one reason why, Hey, I, I guess, you know, I did buy this book off Amazon. And so that's another question under the Dorian principle. Well, there's another Christian who's selling ministry. Should we buy their books and buy their stuff? And under that principle it says, yeah, it's okay. It's not ideal. It's okay. Um, but again, Paul Washer offering the material for free pdf and all that you know that's one reason why i love his material too so even though i mean it is for sale so yeah um, i i do well, i think we both we both do um but yes i do uh jason so if you want to send it the way that's that's fine <laughs> but um yes i do but uh it's not required yeah it, super Obviously chats and stuff required. that's yeah, that's another issue too. And oh, or YouTube memberships or things like that. Yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, the G3 conference, you know, how much does that cost? It's like 400 bucks or 300 bucks or something. It's it's quite a bit. Um, but yeah, you know, so donations are cool then under the Dorian principle, just to answer that. Well, yeah, on here, yeah. The it's the reciproc yeah re how do you say that word reciprocity awesome. yeah there we go reciprocity hey you get this i get that an exchange kind of thing uh, whereas the gospel ministry um should just be freely given so and not under obligation as well so right right, right. yeah no yeah. Not, don't don't feel obligated but uh Sure, if you want to. <laughs> You've never done a show on the Dorian principle. Um, we could sometime, but yeah, yeah. You will be the talking uh, head in that show because I, I don't have that much research on that <laughs> on on the subject. Um, you should go so, listen to it. I heard it on AD's channel, and AD heard it while he was selling a book, 
you know, uh, okay. and stopped selling them. And I had bought that book, and then he stopped selling that book. And I think he just gives it away now. Uh, but you know, I mean, if Christians offer their books for free, I've got a friend in uh, Burundi, uh, Africa, oh, yeah, and right. Burundi is the the center of poverty over there. I mean, I, I think they're the most impoverished nation right now on earth. Um, well, if I want to mail a bunch of books there, it's going to cost 500,000 bucks to mail a thing of books over there. Well, if he could get a tablet, you know, a tablet or whatever, um, ideally he could get every Christian book for free on there. If people obey the Dorian principle minute, you know, our, we offer books and different things, uh, freely. So, um, yeah. Uh, and it goes to, Hey, if you're a pastor, see, we might go an hour on this, right? <laughs> but if you're a pastor and someone says, Hey, pastor, come and marry it. Would you perform our wedding and do the counseling? And then grandpa just died. So would you perform the funeral? Should you charge for that things for premarital counseling, weddings, and funerals? Um, and when I went to Bible college, you know, went through a class like that. That's one of the things that the professor went through and was kind of like, Hey, just follow your conscience. Some pastors do charge for weddings and funerals and counseling. Others don't. Um, but, but think about it sometime. Is it biblical for a pastor to charge for a wedding, a funeral counseling, that kind of stuff in other services too. So. Yeah. That is interesting. That, that, that is interesting. But, but you know, I mean, for those entering ministry in, in some kind of way, you know, it goes through. I remember thinking, oh, let's do a Patreon and wrestling with, well, what do we do on the Patreon? Right. Um, and then looking, oh, what do other Christian YouTubers do? Um, maybe I'll do that. Or, you know, you wrestle through it and, and all that. So, but the way Patreon's built is generally there's some, Recipro rec reciprocity there you go, going reciprocity. Out there, where hey you, you do this level membership i get money you get fill in the blank so um so go join my patreon i don't even know if i have a patreon i don't um, think you do brother <laughs> i don't think you do <laughs> i know I talked about it i should talk about it every five seconds but uh <laughs> yeah so uh, do you you get the last word today do you have it well get it should I have said that? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, my final words, you know, Hey, if you're not living under a rock, you know, Israel, Iran, they're, they're going at it right now. And there, you know, there's chances, unlike the word chance, but perhaps other nations, uh, will get involved as well. Um, here pretty soon. So, you know, my eyes just on that and it's, um, things could be radically different, you know, um, any day that we wake up, you just never know what the next day will bring. Um, but as Christians, you know, Hey, we trust in the sovereignty of God. We know that things don't, aren't just happening by accident. God is sovereign and in charge of these things. So, uh, uh, final thoughts. Yeah. Final thoughts. I'm going to just give, uh, three scriptures and then call it a night. Uh, but be encouraged, guys. Uh, thank you all for watching tonight. I uh, really appreciate it. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're watching on the replay thing, let us know in the comments. Uh, hashtag replay gang. Uh, but I just want to leave, leave you with this. Uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In verse 6, I'll leave you with this. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Grace and peace. Again, thank you everybody for watching. Until next time.